United States Olympic Committee Training Design Symposium 2008 Krista Austin PhD Energy Pathways this original lecture was about an hour and 20 minutes long and these are the audio notes Austin is also a certified strength and conditioning specialist programming the body everything begins in the brain the brain drives how muscles lungs etc are going to act and react coach gets to program how the brain will function. Athletes training can be taught to be explosive or non-explosive. Training can either be or put limitations on body or enhance sports skills. Energy systems defined. ATP PC is the currency of the body derived from creatine phosphate muscle or blood non-oxygen dependent dominates the zi during 0 to 10 seconds 0 to 10 seconds anaerobic glycolysis uses carbohydrates to fuel what you're getting ready to do non-oxygen dependent dominates events from 10 to 180 seconds in continuous duration Continuous duration versus non-continuous duration events help determine type of training and what energy systems dominate sport. Aerobic oxidative metabolism derived from carbohydrates and fats. Oxygen dependent predominates events at around 0 or greater than 180 seconds or 3 minutes of exercise. This system also gets more HTP or currency into body than anaerobic system. Let me re rephrase that. Predominates events at around greater than 180 seconds or three minutes of exercise. This system also gets more ATP or currency into the body than anaerobic system. All of the energy systems work on a continuum and work together. That is, more intense work you do, the chance you will switch energy systems. Energy supply, generally dominating systems. 1 to 45 seconds is anaerobic system. 45 to 120 seconds is anaerobic lactate or lactic system. 120 seconds to 240 seconds is anaerobic plus aerobic systems. 240 plus seconds is aerobic plus anaerobic systems. World class athletes can generate enormous amounts of power and lactic acid output when fatigued which could be a limiting factor for nine world-class athletes so that last uh, segment of information energy systems and where the energy is supplied from could help coaches plan training and get them to see what type of systems they would be using versus the intervals of training that they would be doing I always like to use this analogy with running and wrestling and swimming if our events are six minutes do we need to be running or swimming 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 minutes I don't I don't know if we do because we're never really going to be on the mat that long wrestling is a sport that has one to 45 second uh, bouts of explosive type of wrestling consistently put together again and again and again for about six minutes so I always kind of like to use that sort of uh, analogy to, 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 to you know certainly to explain the coaches what type of training may be more beneficial to our athletes what is endurance and what does it mean this question will help coaches develop better training designs which energy system dominates and how do we train these questions will also help coaches develop better training designs. Programming the body in the right manner could be a limiting factor for many coaches. Athletes have their own individual energy system and pathways and may use different energy systems to get to the same place. Example, Austin sprinted straightaways and jogged turns to complete two mile run because she was a slower runner and other examples of that would be athletes on your team who are some may be suited for longer bouts of work some may be shoot, suited for shorter bouts of work in terms of their uh, ability to sustain and or maintain exercising so when you know that you can individualize the workouts even more models of performance 
what energy system is limiting each athlete from performing. Some athletes resemble one of the models on this continuum. Model 1, Model 2, Model 3, Model 4, or Model 5. In other words, some athletes use more or are predominated by the aerobic system, while others are dominated by the anaerobic system on that 1 to 5 model continuum. The making of the perfect athlete. Track and field studies suggest genotype is not the limiting factor, and the turning the gene on is the limiting factor. In other words, many of us may have genes that have not been programmed the right way or utilized or turned on. Heritability. 45% genetic variance that parents give you and 40% is environmental variance that coaches give you. That is, how athletes are trained will determine what energy systems predominate are utilized and are turned on. So I'm going to go back over some, some of the things that were commented on there. Again, this alludes to one of the other uh, summaries I just kind of gave with regard to training. Some athletes may be better sprinters or some may be actually better long distance runners with regard to training and use that analogy with wrestling longer periods or longer bouts or shorter bouts. In other words, when you're doing your training and or cross training, it's very easy to, you know, point out an athlete is doing very well versus an athlete that is not doing very, very well in terms of sprinting or running or hiking or swimming. But the, the, the coach that understands the training systems and the energy systems may come to the conclusion that, well, this person may have more of that particular uh, fiber type, meaning fast twitch or slow twitch. It's not that the athlete does not want to perform at a high level. If they are predominated by slow twitch muscle fibers, then it may be harder for them to do sprinting work. On the contrary, if an, if an athlete is dominated by fast twitch muscle fibers, it may be longer for them to do endurance type of work. So it's just important to understand it as a coach because when you're putting athletes through training, you need to understand each end athlete is going to be an individual and you've got to be able to understand that so we can give them the best training design. Long-term athlete development stages. Four stages are fundamental stage, learning the train stage, training the train stage, and training to compete stage. DNA that can either be turned on or off during fundamental stage. Neural development is quite rapid from 6 to 10 years of age. Greatest thing young children are good at is speed. Motor learning and control is very important at a young age. Limiting factors, that is genes, can be turned on when young and may need to be worked on and addressed as athletes age. How much time is needed to each energy system? This question is dependent on categorizing and analyzing your sport. So just to kind of give a quick brief summary again, depending on what sports you're doing, you're going to spend, uh, you know, large amounts of time to short amounts of time or seconds and or minutes training a specific system. So if you're, as an example, if you use wrestling versus swimming versus track and field, you'd probably have three different training designs. Within each sport, you may have different training designs. If you used a six-minute bout versus a five-minute bout or kids wrestling versus high school wrestling, Kids wrestling sometimes is three minutes versus high school, which is, is six minutes, or a college is actually seven minutes. In the terms of other sports like track and field where they've got various distances, you would have to take into account, again, the age and the skill and the maturity of the athlete plus the individual discipline that the athletes would be addressing. Categorizing your training. Every day, coaches should ask this question. What is the purpose of today? Coaches can determine the training load each session being or focusing on one of the factors, cardi cardio, technique, drills, psychological skills. What's your focus? If aerobic development is primary factor in sport, this aerobic system should be predominated or should predominate training. Other systems must be utilized at least once per week. If power development is primary factor, power development should predominate training and other systems should be touched on once per week. That's a good point too. Uh, studies have shown that you can do, you can, you know, typically do uh, any type of training once a week to maintain that ability. In other words, you know, all of your training can be geared towards one thing and once a week you can just do endurance type of training and you would be able to actually maintain that. So that last sort of suggestion there was pointing out that you want to have all of the systems being trained. One should probably be more predominant than the other, but make sure you're doing all the others at least once a week. Anaerobic approach.
approach to training. Reverse periodization is used by many European nations. That is, skill, strength, speed are used to perfect technical skill and to increase top power. This results in increased efficiency and higher speed at lower intensities. Performance analysis. This helps determine what energy system to focus on and helps determine limiting factors. These questions will help analyze sport training. What variables are relevant to sport? How specific to the sport is it? That is technique, speed, skill, agility, flexibility. What are the athlete's strengths? Do weaknesses limit the athlete's strengths? Being able to repeatedly tap into energy systems may be a limiting factor, either aerobically or anaerobically. The example of endurance. Tudor Bampa also gives this example in his book, Periodization. Endurance of long duration, greater than 480 seconds, continuous oxygen limits, or oxygen limits performance and medium intensity. Number two, medium duration, 120 to 480 seconds, continuous anaerobic, can limit performance. Speed is limiter. Number three, short duration, 45 seconds to 120 seconds. Strength, speed, 60 to 80 percent of energy system from aerobic system or anaerobic system. Number four, speed, 10 to 45 seconds. Must have maximum speed and strength. Number five, power, 1 to 10 seconds. ATP, PCR, can limit performance. Key for coaches is to understand the energy systems and how to train for specific sports to enhance training and performance. Threshold training for endurance, also in Bampa's book, Periodization. Endurance of, number one, long duration, greater than 480 seconds, 20 minutes or greater. Can't work performed in one set, or continuous work performed in one set. Number two, medium duration, 120 to 480 seconds, 5 to 10 minutes, up to 20 minutes, and continuous repeats, 4 by 5 minutes, as an example. One-to-one -one work recovery ratio. Short duration, which is number three, 45 seconds to 120 seconds. 30 seconds to five minute repeats. Two by five by two minutes. Half to one work ratio. Number five, power, one to 10 seconds. Five seconds to 30 seconds. Repeats of three by 15 by four to eight seconds. Recovery, 30 seconds. Number four, Speed, 10 to 45 seconds. 30 seconds to 2 minutes. Repeats of 3 by 5 by 30 seconds. 1 to 1 work recovery ratio. If athletes perceive the workout to be intense, coaches can use RPE or rate of perceived exertion to determine lactate threshold. Brain program and dictates to muscles what type of energy system and endurance set to do. And also programs the heart. Brain has to be stimulated to use and recruit muscle fibers. Motor units and muscles can be used and utilized, thus limiting factors. Or let me, let me rephrase that. Mus motor units and muscles can be unused and unutilized, thus then they can be limiting factors. Muscle work stimulates brain to use specific energy systems and endurance sets and recruit motor units for more efficient training and performances. Power training is needed to become more efficient. All systems need to be trained per this line of thought. How is performance being limited? Recruiting muscle fibers or work out. Coaches need to ask then answer this question for high performance training. How is performance being limited? Limitations to performance. When muscles are asked to do something, they have to develop cross bridges. The more cross bridges, the muscles form and develop, the more force power the muscles can use. Strength training, explosive training, can help lower pH and increase muscle temperature, which decreases the cross bridges formed in muscles, thus buffering pH with sodium bicarbonate and decrease in muscle temperature, increase in cross bridges. So cold water tanks during training will increase cross bridges by decreasing muscle temperature. Dehydration also limits performance, so hydrating will increase blood volume, which increases performance. 
Maintaining the energy systems. Significant detraining occurs after two weeks of no training. Each sport is a little different with a decrease in frequency of training by more than one third of volume and intensity will elicit a decline in the aerobic and anaerobic systems. Maintain frequency above one third volume and intensity maintains higher level of performance for quite a longer time. Tapering above one third of volume and intensity will sustain performance. Rationale. Changes in aerobic system are due to ventilatory functions, fuel use, body temperature regulation, blood volume, hormonal changes, enzyme activity, and energy balance. Energy balance compounds all of these factors when reducing volume and intensity because reducing training may impact weight gain loss. Most athletes gain weight, which impacts fuel use and fat mass. Summary. Tapping into each energy system allows for maintenance. Complete sensation of training is not recommended for more than two weeks during comp competitive season. After season or during training, cross training can be utilized to help develop aerobic capacity. Plus, it is fun for some athletes. So that was uh, a discussion of the energy systems and the effect that coaches can typically have on the energy systems. The energy pathways, in other words, coaches can actually, you know, for the most part, begin to start to train. You may be born with certain uh, heredity and or genes. And if you go back to the beginning of this discussion, I think it says about 40% to 30% of, you know, you're born with about 40% of it and then coaches train 30 to about 40% of the others. So even if you're born with certain energy pathways and or uh, predisposition to do a certain type of sport, you may still be able to be trained or coach in a direction that is going to increase whatever your potential is. I think that's a really uh, good point because some athletes may be born with, like I said earlier, more fast twitch muscles versus more slow twitch muscle fibers. However, coaches can actually train both of them to a certain degree. I guess the other idea that I want to just focus on here is there was a lot of technical information in this particular uh, audio notes, so it may be more than any others. I always suggest to listen to these three or four or five or six times. This one in particular, you might want to listen to about ten times. I guess if you could sum it up in one or two or three or four sentences, it would be something like this. Each athlete is going to be individually different than the other athlete. That would be one point I would take home. The other points would be that certain sports are going to require certain different types of training. So if you're doing training for football versus soccer versus wrestling, you may actually want to take a look at that because you're going to have different experiences in each sport and because you're in shape in one sport does not necessarily mean you're in shape in the other sport that comes into play with strength and conditioning are we strength and conditioning the right muscles are we wasting time strength and conditioning other muscles that may not be useful in our particular sport and I guess the last thing again I would suggest is listen to this one over and over and over and over and over again ultimately when coaches become very adept at how to put together exceptional training designs now now our athletes have the opportunity to have more potential per their individual skill sets.